Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, January 23rd, 2022. I'm Jeff. Uh, Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Been Determined Length, episode number 633. And we like going on tangents uh, before the show, if you uh, do not... It, if you never get to see or hear the pre-show, although you rarely get to see it, we just have a pre-show graphic up. Um, uh, maybe become a patron. You'll find out about that. Mm. Yeah. So it's that time again. It is time to do this. So we're going to talk about food. What type of food are we talking about, Gary? Um, well, because it's the beginning of a year, um, Typically here in the U.S., I don't know about the rest of the world. If you if you live outside the U.S., comment. Let us know um, if this is a thing also in your uh, area. But for us culturally, we tend to have a lot of folks that begin new diets. We have a new year. We renew our, you know, we make resolutions, whatever. We get back on the bandwagon. We're going to, you know, eat better, uh, move more, those kind of things. So um, for some, it becomes about trying to balance healthy foods versus the things that we crave or desire. So this particular show, I wanted to kind of talk about, <laughs> yes, Jeff is surrounded by certain foods, um, notably of one kind versus the other. Uh, so um, I kind of wanted to focus on it, ask the question, you know, like how much pressure do we feel there is, you know, in this battle for what we shove in our mouth hole because <laughs> it comes around every single year i think um you know it do you do you sense that this year has that shifted because of the pandemic like um you know we're going on two years uh going to be entering the third year of you know folks working remotely being home um you know kind of stuff so i'm, I'm curious to as to what you think about it. I'll, I'll admit I'm making some slightly healthier choices um, mm -hmm. intentionally just because I want to be healthier and better. And I'm thinking ahead to later this year. Um, I hope to have some travel available to me, both for work and for leisure. Um, and I just want to be more comfortable physically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I, if I lose some, some LBs, as we say, some pounds, uh, so be it. Yeah. Um, it's always complicated for me. I have a complicated relationship with food. I will admit it. Um, we, 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 we love each other, but sometimes we hate each other. And sometimes I really can't get over it and I do too much. And then I feel guilty and I try to walk away from it and let it go, leave it alone and try to do other things with nicer foods. But yeah, I always come, <laughs> I always come back. So, well, not always. I, as someone who has, who has dieted and tried and failed, or not failed, I won't use that. That's not true. Um, if you've watched me for several years, if you look through, like, history of the show, uh, Baby, like, there was a point in time when it was like, ooh, who's that? And I'm seeing pictures of myself, and I'm like, I don't recognize that. Who is that little thing there? Like, <laughs> Mm. Um, but that, that was probably one of the times when I was really like successful with my um, dieting regime. But um, what ultimately happens, and it is the thing, is if you don't stick to it, 
100% is very easy to backslide. And that's kind of what happens or has happened. Um, and now uh, I don't make a resolution anymore or like goals as we talked about in one of our uh, previous episodes mm -hmm. um, to try to lose weight or eat healthily. I should be, and I know I should, and I try on occasion to do so, um, but I, it just isn't always on the top of my list. And there's a big reason for it that I think has to do with just the United States and, and commercialism and um, the way we glorify certain things over others mm -hmm. and pricing and everything else. It's much cheaper to go for the unhealthy 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. Or convenient. Convenient, yes, but also cheaper. It is just generally cheaper. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to go to go on to um, Wendy's because they I know they have a bevy of different options. If you look at a salad and you look at a combo meal, mm -hmm. they're usually more expensive to get the salad that is maybe healthier, although probably not, um, than than the you know cheeseburger option. Right. Well, I would say in any case the salad is probably going to be healthier, even if you're smothering it in a bunch of uh, dressing. Yeah, it has the potential to be healthier. Has a lot of fiber, but it is usually not um, the cheapest. And all right, I have a bump on my lip, and I'm noticing it as I'm talking that it's <laughs> getting dry. <laughs> um, uh, again, it just, I have had to, I've dealt with that for years and someone who is now, you know, um, I live with a wonderful partner who cooks really good food and we don't necessarily, we do and we don't. Like sometimes we try to do healthier things, but we don't always do to sell healthier options. It's just, again, like I said, that's sometimes just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the worst person to ask this question about <laughs> because I literally don't think too much about how healthy anything that I ate is. Although some things I might end up are, are actually relatively, I'm going to say relatively mm -hmm. uh, healthy. Um, but like, I'm a huge fan, especially considering COVID and most I'm working from home. So I basically stay at home pretty much all the time, which for me as a person who's not that social uh, uh i i just cook here i don't go out to eat i don't mm -hmm. really order uh delivery as much anymore uh so mm -hmm. i'm making my own food so i essentially have control but the question is what type of food am i making mm -hmm. Um, I've had plenty of things where one of the ingredients in, in my my meal is the big old bag of frozen mixed veggies. And frozen veggies, they're perfectly fine. Maybe not as good as fresh, but it's also cheaper. So here we go into the cheaper part uh, and convenient, especially for when you're going to be cooking them in a in a uh, dish. Uh, but it also depends on if that's the casserole I'm making. I will admit, I'm not even thinking about this episode at all. And I'm not being sarcastic. Truth, I really just found out what the episode was about five hours ago. When I looked at the calendar being like, oh, when are we recording today? And mm -hmm. what's the topic? And then I realized uh, while sitting here during pre-show, I'm like, Oh, what was my grocery shopping that I just did? Um, it was like lemonade, some iced tea, mixes, uh, uh, cheese, 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 uh, 10 pounds of ground beef, but this is some, something I'm going to like, uh, portion up into pounds and put in the freezer, right? Yeah. So it's, right. it, it's more of like stocking up. 
um, and then pasta and pasta sauces. That was the theme. Oh, and the, like hamburger helper, <laughs> which I used to be before. <laughs> very, very much. I'm like, hmm. I just realized I am not making a casserole which involves mixed vegetables. I'm not having any veggies veggies for a couple of weeks unless I order something to mix into the, to that. So, it to me it's more of what am I hungry for? Or what sounds good to eat right now? And um, I'm more about tastes and I wouldn't necessarily indulgent. Just I just want my food to. Be be something I enjoy. I'm gonna eat it. I want to enjoy it. But and I like vegetables. It's just yeah. Sometimes I really want meat and pasta some more. So. Well, and I think that's one of the downfalls of the Great American Diet that we have currently. Right? Is that we we prefer the taste of something over like the funk the functionality of something. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say it that way is like, that's what kind of why I said, you know, healthy versus indulgent. Now, some might debate and be like, well, indulgent is, you know, like a uh, chocolate mousse or, um, you know, creme fraiche, uh, you know, with something, you know, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having caviar, you know, with something mm -hmm. fancy. Right. But, you know, things that cost more, things that are rich, mm -hmm. rich tasting, rich costing. Some people might say that's indulgent. And I'm like, mm, yeah. yes, but well, yes I no. think yeah. in the U.S., a lot of our American diet of convenience is indulgent, mm -hmm. but we don't treat it that way. I think back mm -hmm. to when I was younger, when we were kids, we never went to McDonald's, like mm. hardly ever. Um, it wasn't until I was probably a teenager, I want to say, until we might go. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at Pizza Hut. That was was kind of an indulgence thing to go get, you know, pizza. Um, we just it wasn't something that we did frequently. We cooked at home all the time. Nice. Uh, and so that that to me, I carry forward from my generation that convenience was indulgent because of cost mm -hmm. um, and because we've ramped up manufacturing to such a high degree now yes i agree with you damon like the burger and fries and and drink as like for those of you that didn't hear in the pre-show <laughs> i made a crack about you know getting a, a whopper with cheese with extra fries and, you know extra large fries and a diet coke and i'm like that does not necessarily you know mm -hmm. that doesn't work. balance out Right, that doesn't no. work the way you think it does. But when it comes to finances, mm -hmm. that could, you know, be something that's promoted or on special, you know, and you could get that whole meal for maybe like six something. Mm -hmm. And the salad's like eight ninety nine. You know, so like you know, what Damon's yeah. point is well taken about, you know, how the healthy things could end up costing more. And when you live in America today, and we don't have a living wage, it's universal for folks based on, you know, their geography and where they live and, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It becomes problematic. Folks are just trying to make ends meet. And so, yeah. you know, it, it and, and we don't, I think, do a very good job in our nation of helping people balance and understand their money, like their budget, and how to make the dollars work for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and from the sounds of it, Jeff's probably the most responsible one out of the three of us in terms of like buying something more in bulk and dividing it out and thinking ahead a little bit about meal preparation. Cause I also know for me, and I'm just probably as common as everybody else out there, like I don't really think that much about it, but I did it today, um, right, you know, a little bit before the show, because I had made a whole bunch of rice recently. And I was like, okay, let me add some protein to it. Let me add, you know, some seasoning or sauce or whatever and try to like, mm -hmm. you know, portion this out so I have something to get me through the week because if I don't do that that's classically when I go for the fastest easiest thing mm -hmm. fastest easiest thing is usually less nutritious more caloric and costs me money mm -hmm. because I'm paying somebody else for the convenience factor because they've already made it you know and I can I can get it especially with driving I can get it in literally minutes mm -hmm. um, Preach. You know, 
Now, so, to yeah. be fair, like, I mean, this weekend I indulged a little bit um, and I got some delivery and uh, I had some really good American Mexican, you know, uh, from a newer place locally. And I'm still thinking about it because it was damn good. Um, <laughs> but I also realized I hadn't had Mexican in a while and I don't really order out all that much. So yeah, like it, it, it's kind of one of those, and I'm making a very conscious effort, especially since the, the, uh, the past year of the pandemic, I'll say the second of the two years to buy locally, like to support smaller businesses. Um, mm-hmm. So if I do Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash, any of those kind of like delivery services, I'm picking local businesses. I'm not picking chains. Or something. Yeah. Um, or yeah. if I have to visit them in person or something. Like I'm trying to make sure that my dollars invested are going more locally as opposed to like to a, a national chain where, yes, the money does kind of go back to the community, but like it's usually, usually mm-hmm. kind of limited mm-hmm. and it works. Yeah. yeah. So it works. And. <laughs> I'm kind of in the opposite like realm, not really, but sort of. Um, so as everyone or not everyone knows, but most people I'll probably discuss this more when we have our um, uh, what's going on thing. Um, so Jim was in the hospital a couple of times this month, um, unfortunately, and it left me home by myself. Um, for like, it's not the, not the first time I've been home alone, what have you, but normally, well, normally Jim is responsible for like dinner. Mm-hmm. Dinner is kind of his thing. Like if you're making something or we'll talk about it, if we're going to go get something or we're going to order something, what have you, that's sort of the thing. That's always been the case. He'll usually make things. If he's not making something, he'll, we'll order something out to, you know, come back, come and, you know, get it. Right. Um, I am not a cook. I I can dabble a little in the kitchen. I can make you a mean omelet. Like, yes. But um, beyond that, I, I can't walk into a kitchen, pull ingredients together, and make something. Mm-hmm. I could follow a recipe if I can find it. But mm-hmm. that's, a, that's that takes time. In preparation and knowing what I have in the kitchen, which I usually don't know what's in the kitchen, um, and and then sitting down for me personally, finding like making sure that I can do it. Right. You know, if there's something odd in the res- in a recipe that I don't understand or don't know how to do, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. Having said that, so while Jim was in the hospital, um, I pretty much ordered out like most dinners. If mm-hmm. not all of the dinners, um, was it healthy? No, um, I know for a fact it wasn't. It was it was what was like what was available because um, I was eating later. Um, what was convenient, um, and not necessarily what was cheap, but at least what was relatively on the lower side in regards to. Um, cost um because mm-hmm. i had to take into effect account because i don't drive um delivery those kind of fees that came with getting it for getting it here um one of the things i did find out um if you like say the chains like burger king wendy's what have you a couple of them you could order through their app mm-hmm. cheaper than if you went through like doordash or grubhub they still use doordash or grubhub but it's cheaper to do it that way um good to know because it it saves some money you know here and there mm-hmm. yeah i think um, that's probably because you're paying them directly yeah it is um and um it was it's good it was i mean that was it was good to know and i i used that a, a couple of times um but um you know could i have potentially like walked into the kitchen and looked around and maybe done something maybe um i remembered when i was uh because one of the one of the times he went out there where he had pulled out a thing of ground beef and it was sitting in the refrigerator and i was like okay well what can i do with this and i looked and the first thing that came to mind because the thing i know i know i could potentially do was like a hamburger helper you know i said over there 
mm-hmm. I know he has hamburger helper and there are probably some down in the basement. And if I had taken the time to get off my ass and actually go down and look for it, I probably would have found a hamburger helper recipe or a jar of, of, of pasta sauce and done some, you know, pasta and meat sauce with, you know, I could have done it. Mm-hmm. I can brown ground beef. I know how that works, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Right. It, but at the end of the day, um, I was not feeling it. <laughs> right. And it was much easier for me to pick up my phone and order Wendy's or order something from, you know, wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll deal with the credit card because <laughs> that's what it's going to be um, later. Well, right. And and I think that's what I mean about, you know, why I was giving that example earlier that here in America, like we've taken like the the notion in the past of indulgent items Mm -hmm. of the infrequency of like fast food and that we've pivoted and now it's a convenience. And so we don't really treat it as an indulgence. Um, And there's an effect to that. You know, how do we how do we balance that? Um, you know, I've I've made some personal choices. I'm I'm specifically not trying to eat as much certain fast food um, things that I did in the past because you know I just want to feel better, and I don't necessarily feel that great. I think when I have those kind of things, um, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, one of the things you mentioned when you mentioned like when you were younger, like you guys very rarely ate out, and I was just like, that's new to me. Not eating out um, much when you were younger? Yeah. I mean, oh. yeah, we ate out most of the time. No, no, that's not true. So we ate we ate at home, but there were specific times where we wouldn't. Um, usually, I want to say every other Sunday, if not every Sunday, we didn't eat. We very rarely ate at home. Um, mostly because we would get up, go to church. Like everyone, most everyone was up to go to church Mm -hmm. and then there wouldn't be a dinner made because we would eat right after dinner. So dinner was like at four o'clock, mind you. So three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, So dinner was going to um, like a restaurant, like Ponderosa or um, uh, what was it called? I can't remember, but it was it was usually going to a a a restaurant, sitting down and having dinner together. Mm-hmm. Um, occasionally, we would eat at home, um, but then when my parents split, it became more of a we're gonna go out to eat after church, especially on Sunday. Mm. Um, again convenient the factor became convenience right you know um sometimes family is working um my parents worked my mother worked second shift and my dad worked first shift so dad would be the one that would cook and he would cook more often than than my mom did but she was on on the weekends she would normally be the one that would cook and um Sometimes on Sundays, she wouldn't go to church and she would make something and there would be that. Would, but that was a rarity where she would actually make something and we'd come home and eat. Mm-hmm. But we were we I remember us getting like pizza from Pizza Hut. I remember Pizza Hut a lot because there was one right down the street uh, from us. Um, trying to think where else we used to go. Pizza Hut was one. There was a um, there was McDonald's right around like the corner that we would go to on occasion because it was faster. Right. No, I get that. I mean, and that's also another complication, right? Of like, if you're a parent, you have a, mm-hmm. a you know multi generational home. Um, you know, if you're not a, a single person, those become you know factors in what you're you're going to um do about your you know 
sustenance. You know, and and marketing is a big piece of it. I see it all the time. You know, the convenience of the family dinner, you know, mm-hmm. and, and how it's like, you know, you could get, you know, um, what is it? Pizza Hut was running a thing recently here in the U.S. about um, big dinner box. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like and so, two pizzas and then some treats in it. Your breadsticks yeah. or something like and yeah. I was like, and like the triple decker box or something like that. Yes. Right, right, right. And, and so for me as a single person, I was like, that's a lot. Like, I was like, I don't think I'd ever order that because, you know, like. I think Pizza Hut does a lot to. Um, I think uh, uh, Pizza Hut does a lot of going along the lines of family meals. Like you get, you don't get one pizza. You get two pizzas or three pizzas. You know, the idea that you're doing more of a bulk thing because you've got a lot of people. Like a lot of the yeah. times it's like. Hey, I'm moving. Anybody who helps, I will buy us pizza and we have a big old pizza party and everything mm-hmm. like that. So I, I think that's more of the lines of most of their marketing is more food. <laughs> so that's that's why those specials instead of like the single person thing. Like when mm-hmm. I used to just order pizzas, uh, I would get a large pizza and it would last me for a couple days <laughs> as a pop in the fridge and then reheat it mm-hmm. uh, for such. Um, but again, that's one of those like ahead of the thing sort of things, but um, yeah. it, I, I think that's, that's a marketing thing in that. I mean, my family, when I was a kid, we would, it was, uh, it was a treat. It's like we would come home from, from school and my parents would, they don't finish up work until about five at their earliest. And then I might get a call on the phone it, it, saying, hey, what do you want from McDonald's? And we're like, oh, McDonald's, oh, give me a back. Or uh, I want a Happy Meal because I was it was young enough to be satisfied by a Happy Meal. <laughs> Not so much nowadays. No. Nope. Well, actually, you know what? I would. I think I should try that sometime. I should just order a hack meal and see if that's good enough. No, uh, no, because they got small fries. Eh, eh. And it and it's and it's a single. It's it's a single cheeseburger. It's not a double cheeseburger. Um, uh, or chicken chicken nuggets. There's only like six. I'm like, for that's grown fine. adult, six. You, you need at least ten, if not, go for the whole twenty, and then you have some leftover. I think it's somewhere like 15 or something like that for me. 20 but left over. This is what it kind of comes down to, though, for me, like listening to you guys and, you know, how Jeff, you're like, well, you know, it's not really, you know, you don't get much out of a out of a uh, happy meal or whatever. But there's a part of me that's like, but do we need all of that? Like that, like that's one of the things that's sort of my pet peeve right now is especially beverage sizes um, in it doesn't matter whether it's a healthier beverage or not a healthy beverage. If you go through, especially American fast food convenience, um, um, and you get a small, a small is not a small anymore. Like, I don't even know what a small is. A small is like the value size, 24 thing. ounces. And I'm like, Duh. probably a little smaller like, than this. This is the 18 ounce cup. So, so mama, mama, let me tell you, <laughs> let me <laughs> tell you. <laughs> So one of the things that was happening with me and and Burger King was they're like, oh hey, by the way, like right because I was ordering through the app, uh, they're like, su- not surprised, well kind of a surprise, like hey, like you can get like a large drink or a large fry basically for free is what they were kind of going at. Nothing, nothing with like points or any of that shit. It was like literally like here's an upgrade for your meal because you're ordering through the app, I guess. And I did it one time. I ordered a large drink, and I was like, I ordered like a normal like meal, and they're like, "Here's a large drink." And I was like, "I'm kind of thirsty. I guess I could try it." Um, here you go, and and you get this cup like this, thirty-two and ounce cup like, or something like that. It's like half a gallon. What? How, what the? How, I'm like, the yes. Hell? I don't. I don't need like. First of all. Um, it's like seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. If I drink this now, I'm gonna be up half the night, mm-hmm. pissing, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> or just awake. Yeah, 
or just awake because right, because you, yeah. you get something with caffeine in it and you're mm-hmm. like you know mm-hmm. yeah. not thinking okay. and i'm about to drink a liter of mm-hmm. soda mm-hmm. like that's the that's the part that i'm kind of kind of twisted about and irritated is like you know i'm trying to pick things that don't have sugar in them so i'm going for things that are zero or diet or whatever and you know and it's like and then you get this big ass cup and i'm like really like do i need all of that beverage you know no so technically you don't but like well i think another problem is a lot of people are going for soda and i I will say this uh i i for the past, at least for the past year and a half, I have not had a soda. I did since actually since I had home. I, I think I've added soda a little bit because last winter uh, we had a uh, power outage, or it was a power outage or water outage, one of the two. I think it was water outage. So I needed something to drink, and what was more convenient was to grab case of soda mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, from uh, from the the, uh, the uh, uh, convenience store or supermercado I don't remember one of the two they both of them have soda mm-hmm. um, and, and it was just more convenient for that and one thing is is I found out that I can just for some reason I can no longer drink straight water not even like filtered through my uh, uh, it's filtered through my uh, uh, Breda filter. I can't can't drink it. I I mean I can physically drink it, but it's it's not satisfying to me, and actually kind of tastes gross. Maybe it's just the water in the area or something like that. I have mm-hmm. to have some sort of flavor in it. So I suppose I could just like get those water flavor things, which actually work pretty decently where you just like mm-hmm. squirt me things mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i actually tried that one time i got like crystal one of those light. Yeah. uh crystal <laughs> lights is still a different slightly different thing so i i now had get these huge just these huge containers of like the uh, uh lemon iced tea and mm-hmm. that i really like uh this time around i also grabbed a uh, some lemonade as well as uh got some of the mm-hmm. crystal light uh raspberry i see i need i need the flavor yeah, yeah i can't drink straight water straight water same but way. um i haven't had caffeinated caffeinated slash carbonated beverages in i don't know how long um and that's satisfactory and i think that's probably would be a better thing for most but like this caffeineless this this nice. iced tea lemonade Caffeineless, sure it has sugar. It does. Mm. I admit it. I'm not well unless I do the crystal light thing, then it's not. But yeah. Um, but as long as it has flavor, it it helps. So you can mm-hmm. still like one of the things reasons why I think a lot of people drink soda is because of flavor. Like they want the cherry coke, or they like the Coca Cola, or that they, they like the Pepsi, Pepsi, which is gross. Wild cherry Pepsi is okay, but Hush. Coke is better. <laughs> Personal opinion, of course. Um, but the, the carbonations also provide the, a texture as well. Mm. Uh, I don't think that people necessarily enjoy the burps, although sometimes they find it really funny. Um, but uh, getting out of caffeinated beverages, I mean, anybody who drinks LaCroix what the hell is wrong with you but that's just my personal <laughs> opinion again carbonated beverage although that doesn't have all the that would be in a regular soda yeah i mean it is kind of a, interesting you guys talking about like especially with beverages because i i don't mind having flavored water like mm-hmm. uh canned um sparkling water or whatever the, the coca uh, no, I don't drink LaCroix. Um, you know what I really like out there as a brand, um, not a sponsor, not a not an endorsement, um, is Spindrift. Um, mm. As a brand, they tend to put real fruit juice in their water, but a small amount. It's like 5%, 6%. Enough, enough to provide some flavor. 
uh, some of them, you know, are okay. Some of them, not so much. Um, <laughs> like I, I got one recently that was raspberry cranberry. Um, and I really like that. I don't mind the grapefruit one that they have. Um, mm. So like, but, and to me, that's about satiating that soda pop carbonated beverage, you know, desire uh, kind of thing. Um, I was just thinking the other day, oh, I should double check. Um, Let's see. About I miss um, uh, bubbly shit. What the hell was the brand that they came out with? They came out with that other version or the uh, line that has uh, caffeine in it. Bubbly bounce. That's what they call it. Um, and it has like only 30, which is like half of a standard cup of coffee in each can. So if you're a person who's more caffeine sensitive, like I am, it's a much better alternative as opposed to getting, you know, like, you know, regular cola or whatever that sort of can be equivalent to a cup of coffee. Um, so anyways, it, it, random aside, but I was just thinking, I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember I was buying that. And then I kind of stopped. <laughs> Mm. Well, I'll also yeah, like. I think I need to go back to that. And, and I'll admit, I'll, I'll have had some canned beverages, but and they were monsters, but they weren't the regular monsters. They were like the Monster Rehab or the uh, Monster Java ones, like uh, the the Mocha one that they have, which are not caffeinated or not carbonated. They are yeah. caffeinated. They're monsters for Christ's sakes, but right. they're not carbonated. Uh, I've I've completely moved away from carbonated beverages. I, although I wouldn't be surprised okay. if, if if we go back into the office and they still have the kombucha, I might still have some of the kombucha, but that's a different matter altogether. And then instead of the chemical carbonation, uh, it's fermentation that's in that carbonation, mm. Mm. which is a different type of carbonation. Yeah, I just bought some. Uh... Yeah, I just bought some um, kombucha this weekend. I use it more as kind of a GI balance. Oh, no. For me, like, I try to keep that. But what are we all knowing? Uh, you're... Hey, Gary, you've been lagging. Yeah. You've been lagging hard. Why? I'm not doing anything. I don't know. No, no. You've, been la- you've just been lagging. Right now, it's hard, hard to so. hard to necessarily understand you. <laughs> and you're coming back. rude. No, you're getting better. It, you see, you seem to be better. It's coming and going. I don't know. What's I, don't, going on. I don't know if there's anything going on. Where <laughs> you Watch are. the VOD later. <laughs> You'll find. It. You'll see what I mean. But it, it's, it's, every now and then, it's just a uh, occasional like lag. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um. But no, I, I going into the end of the year, the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I haven't really had any like fermented things in my diet recently. Like I tend to have yogurt every once in a while, um, kombucha, uh, when I think of it, like sauerkraut, you know, like like things that naturally kind of help your 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 gut biome um, is sort of what I, I focus on. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so that was a kind of a tangent point, but. Mm-hmm. There we we're, we're talking about healthy, so yeah, still along the lines of the show topic. Yeah, I just I know for me, um, it's hard to find that balance, right? Like, I am a lover of like baked goods and sweets and what have you. Hell, we I just finished a thing of M and M's. Um, I love like the the, the sweet stuff, like mm-hmm. uh, in particular. I'm also pre diabetic, so <laughs> it's becoming that kind of like situation. Although I did go to the doctor on um, Friday, and my numbers are good, so yay. Um, yeah. um, I'm probably I think I'm still in pre diabetic mode, but not nearly as much. They've gone down a little bit, so yay. So I've been doing little things here and there. And one of the things I wouldn't, I shouldn't have done, but I ended up doing anyway, um, was try, I try to not do as much sweet during the week, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
occasional thing like this, like usually like a, I know this is a this was a box of like movie candy. Um, so it's a lot of of M and M's, but it's also that's been if I'm recalling today, I think all the sweet I've had all day, besides like the crystal light. Um, that doesn't really and, count because there's no sugar. Yeah, it doesn't really. But, it's artificial. Yeah, yeah, but it's still yeah. But anyway, that, like like that's what I mean. Like the actual sugar, sugar. Um, right. Um. But it, it's trying to find that balance that becomes the difficult part. Where is where can you where can you have the occasion? Because we can't not indulge. Like that is never good. Like, but I don't think you should be one hundred percent healthy, 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 healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll so go crazy. You, yeah, you'll go unless crazy. you unless you find some. Because let's also clarify something. Healthy food can be very good and indulgent. You just mm-hmm. need to find the right True. healthy food that, <laughs> that would be indulgent True. to you. It's also subjective True. when it comes to indulgent. Well, I, you bring up a really good point. You know, like mm-hmm. what, what do people consider indulgent? You know, some people might consider eating chocolate as indulgent because they don't mm-hmm. really do it that often. Um, you know, but other pe- people might look at, you know, moussaka as like a, as a dish and be like, oh, you know, well, that's indulgent. And yet on the, up, on the flip side of it, I could see people going, um, that's healthy, <laughs> like, you know, healthier <laughs> than other foods. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's sort of subjective as to, as to what your personal diet is and what you have a preference for and, mm-hmm. you know, what you want to, um, enjoy. Yeah, Exactly. And that's where you try to find that balance. And mm-hmm. it's not easy. It's and not easy fall. eating greens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Word. Yeah. Um, and because and, and again, like, like, thank you for that actually, you know, kind of offhanded moment there, Jeff. But you make sense because guess what expires very quickly? Greens. You cooking it. Yeah. Greens. Like green foods, healthy food, healthier foods tend to expire quickly. So if you don't like healthy, fresh produce, things like that that aren't, you know, chemically treated or whatever, like all those things that, you know, you can do if you don't eat them quickly, they go bad quickly. And you know, if you're a slow um or eater or slower like prepare a food, like if you don't, you know, cook at home all the time, then you're going to have these moments where you're going to get stuff and realize, oh shit, it's gone, it's gone bad. Look, um, there, there's nothing wrong with getting fro- frozen spinach. True. In fact, it like, can be very uh, convenient, and depending on what type of packaging you get, you could actually, it actually is probably even more economical in the fact that you could get this big old bag of like uh, spinach pellets and that. That you only take what you need for the dish, and you, you keep the rest in the freezer. Right, and and I want to bring up that point. Like it's been talked about more so, I think of late that far more often than not, if if like you know, like Damien, your point is well taken. Fresh, yeah. healthier foods spoil faster. Why? Because mm-hmm. they don't have any preservatives. Like the like mm-hmm. that's the way nature does that. Like you know, yeah. guess what? It doesn't get to do anymore. Live. You've cut yeah. it off from its source. It doesn't have a root structure, like so it can't really thrive that much on its own, so it's just going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, hence, you consume it. Nom, nom, nom. You put it in your system. Now it's really dead. Um, you know, and you absorb the nutrients and stuff. But if you um, have it and it's harvested and then flash frozen, it can be still healthy and actually convenient because it has that um you know, that ability to it, but that takes, again, conceptual planning in a way to think Mm -hmm. ahead, like, oh, let me buy these things. Like, oh, I'm going to make smoothies, so let me buy frozen fruit or frozen Mm -hmm. berries or, you know, whatever it is. Um, Like, Jim bought, like, I remember one of my favorite moments, or not favorite, it's an unfortunate thing, was (laughs) we had gotten strawberries. Like, we had, we, um, not too long ago, we had learned that foods that we have been avoiding or he especially had been avoiding because of the diverticulitis right. um 
were things that he can now have. So he got this big like thing of strawberries. This is, and it was like this is going to be really great because you know we don't. He had not that he said he hadn't had them in a while, but we got strawberries and like I was looking forward to whatever he was going to do with them because mm-hmm. whatever he's going to do with them, I was going to eat because <laughs> I love strawberries. Right. Um, and he um, put them in the refrigerator and we started, you know, we, I think he had an idea about what he wanted, to, something he wanted to do with them. Mm-hmm. And we, I, we look at them a day or a few days later and they're mold. They're moldy. They're done. Mm. They're gone. They're gone. We don't know. I mean, I, I kind of have an idea of what happened. There was, there was other stuff in there that was probably already older and it just kind of spread and it hit the, yeah. But anyway, um, <clears throat> that was, it sucked because it was just like, God damn it. Like we, I feel like we had just, and he was saying that like we had just gotten these mm-hmm. and now we got to, you know, essentially toss them because we can't, eat them because they're moldy and i was like yeah but well well you know you it if you didn't do anything with it quickly if you didn't freeze it like you said or do anything with it or thought about what to do with it you might lose it um right yeah like i love my mom but she got us a for christmas she got us a big thing of oranges and other like tropical fruits and i was just like i know me personally i'm probably going to have one or two of these and i'm going to be done because i don't want any more orange Mm. um and i did end up having an orange and there there was oranges and grapefruits and a couple of apples and i mean i had an apple and i had an orange and then that was it and then jim put all the rest of them in the bin and it's kind of funny because he had also just recently bought a bag of oranges too. So <laughs> we had a shit ton of oranges. Right. And I tried so hard to eat like oranges, but I can't. Like after a little bit, I'm I'm done. It's it's I don't know if it's the acid or what, but like or the juice and the the the, the um it's sticky and whatever. It, uh, and I was mad because, I mean, I don't, you know, you can't tell me they didn't necessarily go bad. We ended up actually, he just ended up using them as the cranberries that he had. Um, and he um, used it to um, season and glaze the pork we had for dinner tonight. So orange and cranberry, it was a, it was great. But the main reason he probably used it was because they were going to go bad if right. we didn't use them. Mm-mm. I mean, you break up. <laughs> Sorry. I think your point is well taken that, like, how do you utilize the supplies that you have and, and mm-hmm. you know, what are, what are you going to do with them? Like, I made, you know, some brown rice in the Instant Pot. Um, I found two recipes for rice, one for brown rice. Uh, I've come to realize that I really prefer brown rice. I mean, I moved to it a long time ago in my personal diet um, quite a bit. But, anyways, like, uh, so I made a whole bunch of it and now I have a lot of it and I was like, all right, smart ass. Now you got to use it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so that's why, you know, I've been kind of like, okay, well, let me make this and blend it with that or, you know, make up some different uh, kind of dishes and things. So that way it's, you know, being more healthful minded. Um, but so that, that was, you know, part of where this all comes from, you know, it's just the change in, in folks and this time of year and what you're trying to do. And I know for me, convenience is a big great job. I don't have much time to, to bring things together to make it work, um, which is ironic because um, recently uh, Kenji Lopez Alt had like posted about 15 second scrambled eggs. Um, and I was like, what? And like, I'm pretty sure it was him. And I was like, get the fuck out of Dodge. Um, and it works and it's super like fast, convenient. Um, I made the eggs this morning and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I could do this every morning before I go to work if I wanted to, like, you know, it doesn't take that much effort. You know, it's more about second scrambled eggs. (laughs) Um, so basically you you need to crack the eggs. You need to 
to All right, the break cooking the egg. time is 15 seconds. Everybody right. calm down. And it doesn't take that long to crack open an egg and, and whip them up. I mean, is it um, like high heat or something? Yes. So what you basically oh, do is Jesus. you take your, your, your nonstick skillet, you make it really high heat, and then the instant you add the eggs, you kill the heat. Mm. Oh, yeah. And you use all the residual heat to cook the eggs through, and you're just constantly kind of moving them around. Chopsticks would probably be oh, great for doing you that. You could use chopsticks. Um, I think that would probably be the best way to, to, to be scrambling your eggs in right. the pan would probably be using chopsticks. Well, I mean, I pre-scramble my eggs before I pour them in the pan. But um, So the idea is like you heat up the pan and like you can take a drop of water and just let it hit the pan and see if it sizzles and it like, you know, fizzes away. And that's how you know the pan is hot. And then you just pour the eggs in. Um, but the thing is, is the pan is already hot and you turn off the heat and you just let the residual heat like cook the eggs through and you just kind of, you know, move them around and keep them moving. And it, you know, makes nicely cooked. Now, to be fair... This is for a soft, creamy scrambled egg. If any of y'all out there like your like your eggs in chunks or brown, <clears throat> then it's gonna take just a little more time to cook them through. So you might not turn the heat all the or way off. Yeah. Low. Yeah. Mine might be thirty or forty-five seconds. <laughs> right. But even so, think about it. You could have eggs. You could have scrambled eggs in less than a minute. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? Like, everyone always thinks, like, it takes damn long to make eggs. And I was like, this is genius. I've done it several times now. Um, you know, and if you want to go a little bit further in the effort, one of the things you can do is, and this is this is the part where I think people don't go into it. So, like, I didn't do it this morning. Um, but you can, especially if you want them to be more creamy or more smooth. Um, you can uh, make a very small amount of, like, a slurry of potato starch and water. Um, and add it to the eggs so that it, what it does is it helps with the protein binding. Um, mm. so, you know, but that's, that's a, another finesse kind of thing. But my point is, is like, I could theoretically have eggs every single morning before I go to work. Um, I just don't give myself that kind of time. You know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not a person who gets up two hours before work and does all these things and blah, 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 blah. Mm. I'm like, no baby. Like, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit of a toddler. Um, I like being in my bed, so I, you know, I don't necessarily want to get up and get um, running and and all that kind of stuff. So, but I I won't have a choice. Like for tomorrow, I got a shovel, like because we mm -hmm. snow. So if I don't shovel tonight after we're done recording, then I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So I have to deal with um, what are the benefits that I've had. And it's something I should probably, you know, I need to take advantage of. Um, I'm salaried. I can technically work I don't know, as much as I want to or as, as long as I need to to get the job done. Mm -hmm. It also means since I'm working from home, I don't have to like, and my job in general, I don't have to like take everything um, immediately like mm -hmm. i don't have to once i get up and get showered and dressed i don't have to immediately come down here and start working i can start working at nine or you know what have you if i want to as long as i work the requisite hours in some way shape or form whether that means like usually i can sometimes i haven't done it really but uh, i could do a 30 minute lunch as opposed to an hour lunch right and then kind of jump around a little bit um when I, I occasionally will make myself breakfast as opposed to um, throwing a frozen like sandwich in the microwave and heating it up and that be my breakfast. I could I, I've, I have on occasion made myself an omelet. Yes, I can make omelets. I love omelets, actually. Um, and I'm actually pretty good at them now, especially now that I have a omelet pan as opposed to... Um, my big like non-stick skillet, which mm -hmm. is harder to flip an egg in. Um, um, and learning a little bit more on how to make them a little bit thicker, which is always nice. Um, but I now in the mornings can do, I have time to do that a little bit more often and I don't do it all that often. So it's a kind of an indulgence right. for me 
to to um, take the time and make myself a nice you know breakfast. Um, I usually Jim um, gets bacon, um, and I'll um, I could cook bacon in the microwave. I, I've been doing that for years um, since Ew. growing up. Huh? You. Sorry. So you say you, but let me tell you, sometimes it is the greatest bacon because it is nice and crispy. Now, if you don't like crispy bacon, it's not for you. All right. When uh, we say crispy bacon, you need to clarify the definition of crispy in this case. Snap. Like, like, like when I bite into it, does it like obliterate and shatter? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> oh, yo, get out. <laughs> I I will I, I prefer to bake my bacon. Waffle it's, House. Like, right. I love like right, Waffle right. House. Bake bacon. bacon. That's like my favorite. That's my favorite thing. Like no, one no, of my so favorite places to get bacon. Here's the right, here's the complication. We're gonna have to do a whole episode about bacon. That's <laughs> anyways. My point We're is, bears, so of course we need to do an episode about bacon. Anyways, here's, right, on. there's this whole thing though, right? About how um like I like crunch. Like that's one of my mouth sensation things that I enjoy about food. I've realized like I, I need to have crunch in my foods. Hence I will add an element of that kind of thing to stuff. Mm -hmm. That being said, like that's the complication with bacon because like if it is that crispy and I bite into it and it shatters and breaks apart into a gazillion pieces and I end up basically wearing part of it. No, ma'am. Like that is not acceptable. It, isn't that, that bacon, wouldn't that be burnt? No, <laughs> no. But if no. that bacon is crumbled up and it is put on a salad, or it's mixed in with some some eggs, or like you know, put it, like like there's so many applications. I'm okay with that. I just. No, 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 no. But okay, I also, to be fair, I don't want it flaccid. Like, no, don't yeah. get me floppy. None of this, oh, none no. of this droopy, yeah. wet, and... not properly rendered. No, no, no. All right, yeah. I gotta add to the matrix before I forget. <laughs> talk about so, this. Jeff, to your point, uh, <laughs> I I like baked bacon too, but baked bacon takes a while, and yes. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. It is a problem. It's a problem. See, that I, that, that's that's a problem, and I think this might help with the healthy versus indulgent thing. Is yeah. people don't I, I take like time food. for their food. I like how much do it. you appreciate food if you don't take time to do something about it? Yeah, the occasional I, convenience. I, yeah, occasionally I, grab I, I a, a a burrito bowl from Chipotle. Um. <laughs> Chicharrones. I um, <laughs> love my microwave bacon, and Jim likes it too. So, yeah. so um, something about that is just wrong you to, to me. Find, you have to find the right balance. Pa pan fried bacon. You need to find. The I right can understand that. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. But <laughs> pan fried bacon, <laughs> oven baked bacon, sure. But microwave bacon. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even know how you get it that crispy in the microwave easy and i will i will when we do the bacon episode i will give we'll talk my about episode. bacon more in the bacon episode. <laughs> i will tell you my i will tell you my tips and tricks to get some really nice good like i'm not saying shattery bacon don't get me wrong i'm not it's not quite there it's good crispy cooked bacon yeah, I'm good with so, bacon bits too. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll, it's we'll, just, we'll, we'll talk about it. But again, wow. I don't know. Oh, the, the description just makes me feel like you burned your bacon. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it is too crispy. It is not bad. That's not Especially, what we're doing. Uh, now, it is easier to burn bacon. I will give it that much, especially depending on your microwave. But I digress. Since we're going to have it be a topic, I'm going to stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> Hey, so uh, Owen asked in the live chat, do y'all like the chicharrones? So the question would be, really um, does everybody present know what they are? I do. Or, like, yeah. I, I, I'm aware of them. I can never remember what chicharrones are. Pork which I, I don't I was just pork rinds. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever had any any of that. I don't, I don't think I've ever so, had chicharrones. So I'm going to gonna say, I don't know. 
Well, so here's the interesting part. Um, chicharrones theoretically could be made from different mammals. Mm. We'll put it that okay. way. Um, it could be chicken or beef or mutton. Um, most of them think of most people think of them as pork rinds, but here's the interesting part. Like they can be fried or they can be cooked mm. or baked. And so like there's some there's some qualifications to that. As a snack, like uh, they're typically a dried, fried like snack. Um, a lot of people who do Atkins back in the day, they do mm -hmm. keto. Like it's a very popular crunchy snack thing mm -hmm. um, because it's basically protein with seasoning. Um, yeah. in, I, in that case. Um, so my mother loved um, pork rinds. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not. Um, I can have them on occasion. And I think what happened for me is I found out what it actually was. And they were just like, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I don't know why. Just the, the fact that it's, it, it is what it is, like, irked me to the point mm -hmm. where I, I couldn't have it anymore. Um, now, I want to try actual chicharrones, like, not not pork rinds in a bag that has probably been, you know, mass produced or whatever. I want to have like actual, like someone makes it chicharrones, or I go to a, a mercado, a supermercado, or something along those lines and get get it from them. Um, because I don't believe I've ever had that. I think that most of the time when I've had I've had pork rinds. So yeah. Anywho, I already said that. <laughs> I um yeah, I mean I've I've had them in the past. I've enjoyed them. Um my problem is they're they're very airy. So like while they're crispy and crunchy, like they puff up and they've and there's a lot of air to them. So my problem is is like I could like, you know, demolish a whole bag mm -hmm. like, without, like thinking. Um so yeah, that that becomes Salt. problematic. Salty. Time. That well, that too, the sodium. Holy, holy hell! Like, watch your blood pressure, kids. Mm -hmm. If you're not having much salt in your diet, bacon is great for you. Fact. But I know nothing. Nobody who doesn't have salt. It's either too much or or just enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been kind of watching my intake, and that's another thing, you know, because of the medicines that I've taken, and I actually had a snafu this month. Um, I'll try to remember to talk about it and our, what's going on uh, with my medication. Supply chain stuff, it's fun stuff, kids. Mm. Um, you know, so, yeah, that, that was a whole, that was a whole journey. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to um, try to figure out you know, what I wanted, how I, you know, uh, want to get some stuff and, and those kind of things. Mm. Well, I think overall, just to kind of wrap things up, I think we're good to go. Um, Ooh, wow. Sorry. Something just went in my throat. Mm. So to wrap things was. up, I will choke. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, oh. couldn't help it. God damn it. Anyway, anywho, woo, anywho. Um, <laughs> I, broke I don't job. know what that was. Um, <laughs> I just face bumped so hard. So it was anonymous. Yeah, I don't know who it was. I don't know. <laughs> what, yeah, I don't know <laughs> anything. That was the fastest. <laughs> it was quick. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even, even see it happen. No one saw it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap things up uh -huh. <laughs> thank uh -huh. you for turning the wheel um it, it it's, it's all about balance i yeah. think mm -hmm. overall um i know the desire now to lose weight is always high especially around this time of the year um 
I always told myself, don't do it now. Wait a little bit. Let all the fads and 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 like all those things come out and and you have hibernation now that <laughs> during mm-hmm. this you also have the uh hibernation sort of uh mood being mm-hmm. in the the colder time of the year so people are like oh i want more fatty you do the worm comforting foods mm. yeah and you want to and you're 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 we're slower it's mm-hmm. winter you're colder you don't go you're not out as much you're not doing as much because that's just the way you know we are so take take some time and just maybe think about what you want to do i think you know given our episode um a few weeks ago um regarding goals like take some time and really think about the map you want to be on and where you want point b or the end goal to be mm-hmm. and see what you can do to to get to that point right and where you're what the reason is for wanting to do what you need to do gary has mentioned a couple of times this episode like there's you know health related reasons for what him wanting to change some of the diet and things that you're doing and food wise uh, which is fair. It's a perfect reason to want to change up what you're doing. I should, emphasis on should, be doing the same thing. And I kind of am. I'm not doing, I'm probably not doing as much, but I'm doing things here and there mm-hmm. um, to sort of help myself get back to, w- get better on how I'm doing and eating. So, but give yourself time and don't be afraid to falter, um, fail. I don't like using the word fail, but that's that's it's a it's a word that happens. Um, yeah, it's that a word. Happens. It's a word that happens. <laughs> and go from there. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think this ties in a little bit with you know when we had had our. Um, our landscape of relationships and talked about goals and accountability. I'm glad that Ed, you know, talked to us about the idea of values, mm-hmm. like and aligning with that. And I think that's what it's coming down to is I'm just unhappy mm-hmm. and I'm going to own it. Like I just don't feel physically happy. And so I want to change that. And I know that the way that changes is for me to like reduce my body mass, you know, be more flexible, um, you know, make the aches and pains and those kind of things reduce by taking better care of myself. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. So that's part of, you know, why I'm making these, these shifts and these, you know, modifications to, you know, be more reasonable about that and, and to stop doing what I know is not working or Mm -hmm. good for me, you know, all this last minute impulsive kind of decision making, um, not only is probably being more expensive in the long term, but it's also, you know, costing me and and just my own happiness and and comfort. And don't grocery shop when you're hungry. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with that a lot, but there's a part of me that's like, do you know what's not good right now is trying to grocery shop when you have a specific thing in mind and then you can't find it. Mm. So then you get hangry. (laughs) (laughs) Even worse. Because you're like, look, look at what's available and work from there. Right, right. It's like, why could I not find the ever living, like, blah, blah, blah? Well, you know. Why does HEB never have Bush's chili beans? <laughs> Instead of, it, 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 I always would have to get something else or I'd have to order from Target because for some reason Target has the chili beans. But not mm-hmm. HEB, the grocery store, biggest grocery store in, in Texas. I had to deal with like yesterday. I, I like I had I was we had game and we went. I was looking for a, a basket for something, and I ended up going into Target, and I finally found it. And I was like, I am hungry, and Jim's gonna. We have to go get groceries before we do anything else, like pick out dinner or whatever. And I'm like, let me get something, something, and I'm walking past the. Um, grocery area and just to my right is the thing of cheese. And I was like, oh, there we go. There's like a thing of snack cheese. I, I bought a thing of like 
Tillamook, um, yeah, not quite the cheese cues, but like Tillamook, like aged um, shark white cheddar, like um, little things of it. Or the uh, little like the circle stacking. things. Yeah, I don't think they're sa- they're circles, but they're just the squares. Oh, okay. They're they bar bell or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah, not the baby bells, but something else. And it was just like God. And 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 as soon as we got in the car, guess what I didn't get? Guess guess what I didn't eat? The cheese. Nope. Didn't touch a single piece of it. Apparently, you weren't hungry for cheese. Don't don't shop. Well, don't shop when you're hungry. Literally, what she said. Right, Um, right, right. Because yeah, because you spent money on something that you thought you want, and then you didn't end up really Mm -hmm. enjoying it or whatever. I mean, I'll eat them. Don't get me wrong; they'll be eaten. (laughs) It just wasn't eaten at that time. Just not right then and there when I was why I, why I got them in the first place, right? <laughs> and that I did. Gave... You crack me up. You're like, don't get it wrong. They're gonna be eaten. <laughs> if anything, it will be. Eaten. I did order three pounds worth of cheese. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. Hi. Skype was being weird. I'm not sure Type if anybody actually... weird. Oh, did we all have that same thing? Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm calling that a Skype thing. Mm-hmm. That wasn't us. We flashed everybody with the Skype logo. Hey, guys, guess what we use when we teleconference? Yeah, that was pretty wild. I just watched it on the live stream. Like, both David and I, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw my camera that I sent to you, bloop. And then you guys blooped. No. See, I didn't see you guys. I just saw me like go through this weird cycle thing. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, what is going on on my end? Okay, it wasn't just me. Mm. In any case, uh, I, I think that's the end. I've got uh, three pounds of cheese that I need to eat. Um, <laughs> Better take your man of <laughs> girl. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat it all at once. <laughs> I'm actually gonna break out my um, got a uh, one of those like uh, a block uh, shredders that have like slicing mm-hmm. on one side and different types of shreds on each side. So I'm mm-hmm. probably gonna uh, bring that out and slice off my, a few things from my block cheese. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cheddar, maybe something else. I don't know. In any case, that's the end. Let us know what foods you find indulgent and what foods you find healthy and are you healthy and indulgent or indulgent and healthy or are you one or the other let us know where you fall in the spectrum of healthy indulgence (laughs) I'm I'm a little loopy right now for some reason Play ways to contact us. You pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Maybe leave us a voicemail at 361 COL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. It's set to expire in about 30 days, and I'm not even sure if we want I want to even renew it. Um, Which all it is is somebody leaves a message, by the way. That's all it needs to do to refresh. I thought that was already done recently. Uh, that was probably about a year ago. Uh, but you can also follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube at Cups Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also find uh, join our entourage chat at tenderingurl.com slash telegram dash C-O-L. Uh, you can fo- find out when we're planning on recording these shows by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash C-O-L. You can get various accoutrements, such consent as my foreplay shirts, which my uh, co-hosts are, are representing with uh, a drag one and a bear one. And we have different designs. They were designed by Smash. You, know, you can find that at Zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Those specific designs that my co-hosts are wearing were designed by Smashy, where you can get other designs by him that aren't on our store. Uh, by going to his uh, tpublic at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. You can also become a patron for us at patreon.com slash cubs out loud where you can listen to the beginning where we rant about certain medical things uh, uh, from the past year. Not that anybody can guess what that means. 
And you could also send us some cash by uh, shooting uh, some money through PayPal mm-hmm. at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Don't forget, we're also available We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. Subscribe to us there. Rate us there. More people will find us the more you rate us. Um, you can find me anywhere in the internet but at box tech, box puppy, box cup, box something or other, and windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. On Twitch, where I'm streaming some Final Fantasy, the, the Endwalker main story scenario quests, as well as Bears and Dragons, which I was very quick on getting the VOD up this week. Very quick, like within an hour after we were done recording. It was awesome. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup 79, that's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, have some cheese, everybody! Good night! Ciao for now. Awesome. What? Unless you're left with some tolerance. <laughs>